So without further ado, why don't we go ahead and get started? Let's do it. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to episode 19 of the SSBC Digital Series. My name is Jordan Edelstein, and I'm a member of the Syracuse Sports Business Conference. Today, I'll be the moderator, and I am super excited to bring you all today's speaker. Joining us is Wayne Kimmel, managing partner of 76 Capital Sports. Wayne is a graduate of the University of Maryland at College Park and the Delaware Law School. He's the author of Six Degrees of Wayne Kimmel. He's the chairman of the board of 76 Capital Sports Advisory and is also a strategic partner with Rubicon Talent. Wayne, welcome to the show, and thank you so much for being here. Oh, man, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. This is going to be a lot of fun. Of course. So why don't we go ahead and why don't you walk me into kind of how you decided to find 76 Capital? You know, what was it about this industry that made you so interested in getting involved in it? Well, you know, I'll, t I'll take you back and, and maybe it's even more relevant today than ever before. But I grew up in Delaware, um, where our next president um, is, is, is from. And I'm very, you know, I, I grew up in Delaware, uh, went to the University of Maryland, uh, was supposed to, um, you know, I really wanted to play sports um, in college, uh, either football or basketball or baseball. And none of that, that, that really didn't work out. It wasn't a wasn't good enough. So went to went there. And when I was at Maryland, I, I actually became a, um, I did the play by play for the football games and for the, uh, the basketball games at Maryland. And like any nice Jewish boy after that, I went to law school. Um, and I have some, some great stories that I talk about in my book about kind of leaving Maryland and going to law school. And then, and then it was, I was, it was the mid 90s at this point. Right. And I really, really, you know, was super excited to start working with my dad and we were going to, you know, build this law firm together, but it was the mid nineties mm -hmm. and there was this internet thing that was happening. Right. And a number of my friends were starting businesses, becoming entrepreneurs, were, were, and I, and I started going to the, with them to these events and I started seeing these groups of people crowding around certain individuals. And I'm like, why are all these people talking to those, those people over there? And he's like, oh, those people are investors. They're venture capitalists. They're angel investors. I'm like, what is that? I never even heard of that. I was a history major. I went to law school. I mean, like, I had never heard of this stuff. Right. Like, yeah, those are, the one, those are the people that make our dreams come true. I was like, whoa, that's pretty cool. I, I want to I be one of those. I want to be one of those guys. So, you know, fast forward a couple of years later, I was crazy enough to think I could raise my own venture capital fund. Um, and I went out there and networked like crazy, met a ton of people and raised $20 million. And I started investing in startup internet companies in 1999. And, you know, through that, investing in companies like Seamless Web, which, you know, back in, in 2000, people thought I was crazy that I was investing in companies like that. And, uh, you, know, you know, those guys, you know, again, People are like, why do you need to order food online? It doesn't make any sense. You know, just call in your order, fax it in. You know, this yeah. is crazy, right? So, you know, that's to me, that's where it all really got started. About four years ago, um, you know, really, and, and we were very fortunate. I mean, companies like Seamless, Public is Grubhub, and a number of other companies with, that have had some really great successes. But four years ago, came to this almost epiphany and said, you know what? There's something happening in sports. There's something happening where everybody wants to either go out and play a sport, watch a sport, or have their kid be the next LeBron, Serena, or Ninja. <laughs> and like, it's, this is across everyone. Like there's, right. everyone fits into one of those three buckets. And then you hear, you know, incredible people like Michael Rubin, who's the CEO of Fanatics and owner, owner of the Sixers. And he says, you know, the, the biggest industry over the next decade is going to be the sports industry. E-commerce was the last decade. This is sports. And we agree wholeheartedly. So four years ago, we started investing solely in the sports industry. And that was in the sports tech industry within the esports world and sports betting. And it's a super exciting time right now. Right. It's, it's amazing to hear you, kind of your story. You know, me being a college student personally, I, I'm a business major, but I haven't, you know, specified what exactly. And it's cool to kind of see someone else's moment where they're like, that's what I want to do, where they're kind of taken back when you saw those investors and you realize, you know, that's something that I'm really interested in. 
Um, maybe you can talk us talk a little bit about um, what companies, how like what the process looks like in finding these companies, and you know how does uh, seventy six capital kind of come to an agreement that you know what we want to invest in this company and we believe in this company. Can you walk us through that process? Sure. I, I think one of the, the most important things for us at seventy six capital and from all my partners and everyone there, I mean, we, we go back, goes back to our major philosophy, and which, which goes back to this idea that the kinds of people that we wanna work with, and they're the entrepreneurs, they're executives of, of other organizations we get involved with, as well as our investors. We want people that are passionate. We want people that are smart. We want people that are nice. We want people that really, really want to change the world. So, if they have those qualities and those traits and fit into this overall philosophy of doing a really big thing, then, then we want to start taking it to the next level. So that's where, that's what it's all about for us. And specifically, you know, we've been really, really fortunate to find individual entrepreneurs that fit all those, all those different traits. Right. I mean, and the, one of the things that we find is the most important is the word nice. And people have been working with nice people. That is so important because especially when you're investing in a startup company, these companies, I saw something really funny. It was, a, it was some company, it was an overnight success after 19 years and they went public or something recently or they were bought, I forget what, the, what it was. And it was cracking up, like overnight success, 19 years. But that's how it is in business, right? It does take a long time, hopefully not 19 years, but sometimes it does take that long to get to the, the top, top, top. I mean, you look at companies like Facebook and Google, I mean, they didn't go public after 24 months. They didn't go, go public after 36 months. I mean, those things, it took years for them to get to where they needed to be before they went public. And, and that's where you know, a lot of people sort of miss, miss out on, on thinking about that. So when we get involved with an entrepreneur who has an idea at a very, very early stage, and we help them grow and grow and grow. And sometimes it goes down and then it goes back up. Hopefully it goes back up. I mean, there, it's, it's, but the thing is, there's no straight line to the top when it comes to success, especially in business. Right. I think that's truly amazing that, you know, that's one of the things you guys look for in the entrepreneur because it's almost a reflection of their idea itself, their startup, because if you can't, you can have such a great idea. And it can be amazing, but you know, when it has that downfall, if that person is not nice and easy to work with, it might not ever go back up. And I think that's truly amazing that you guys do that. Now, while we're on the topic of, um, of downfalls, can you maybe talk about an investment that maybe didn't pan out the way that you wanted it to? Yeah, you know, there, there's, there's been a number of companies that we've gotten involved with over the years that, that haven't worked. I mean, that's the venture capital business. I mean, our business is all about trying to hit home runs. And what, 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 are, what are some of the greatest home run hitters in the, in the world? You know, right, they strike out a lot. Same thing within the venture industry. And if you're not swinging for the fences, you're not looking to get the kinds of returns that we look for. I mean, when we invest in a company, we want to make at a minimum 10 times our money. I mean, that's, you know, a lot, that's like crazy talk in a lot of cases, right? But that's what we do. That's the business we're in. So we have to do that. You know, we, we've had a situation, you know, just, just now <coughs> within one of our portfolio companies, which, you know, thankfully is not a swing and a miss. It was a swing and this thing was rolling. And because of COVID, it looked like it was going to go the wrong way. But the, the entrepreneur and the team did such a great job that the company's actually going even faster right now that's awesome and that's this company called nerd street gamers i mean we were an, we're a, nerd street gamers is one of our portfolio companies it's an esports company we brought on you know i helped bring comcast as an investor with to the to the to the um to the party with us we brought in five below the the kids retail store where we're putting in esports facilities inside of over a hundred five below stores all across the country to enable people to be able to play video games across the country, you know, in, in, in all these stores, right? So, well, they have over a thousand stores. We'll have about, you know, a hundred of those stores that we'll have these in them. Right. And we have one in Philly and one in St. Louis and one in Austin that are open right now. And, but here's the thing, COVID hits. Who's going into these places? Not a lot of people. So we, what we had to do is we had to make a little bit of a change. 
you know, instead of, because we really believe that the world of esports and playing competitive video games against people is best done in person. But we had to really flip that model to do more of it online. Right. And because we've had such incredible relationships with the Activisions, the Activision Blizzard, with Riot, um, and, and, you know, all these groups that are out there that enable us to, to run really amazing tournaments, we now switched a lot of our business online. Hopefully, hopefully we'll be coming back, you know, to the, to the offline world soon. But that, was a, but that was a really, really big, you know, change where it could have gone the wrong direction. But these guys did the right, did an amazing job and, and turned it around. Yeah, that's awesome. I think that's what truly makes the difference between, you know, being successful, but then being able to take that to the next level is being able to adapt when something, you know, no one expected the pandemic to hit. And that ability to adapt, you know, you had a great plan set in stone, you know, you're ready to roll it out and then this pandemic hits and you're able to adapt like that. I think that's amazing. I think that's one of the attributes that makes you so successful. So can you tell me a little bit about, you know, what a daily uh, work day looks like for Wayne Kimmel? Yeah, well, you know, fortunately, I love what I do. So, I mean, and, I, and I'm so lucky. I mean, it's one of the things that I think I wanted to really stress with you and, and sort of, you know, really everyone at Syracuse and anyone who's listening. I mean, if no matter what you're doing or what you decide to go do, if you don't love it, go and do something else. And if you love it, you know, just lean in. And so for me, I love what I do. I'm so fortunate to be able to get behind and back entrepreneurs that are doing the next, next thing. So I jump out of bed in the morning, I'm fired up. No matter, I mean, I'm ready to go, like right away. And in this COVID world, I sit in this seat that you see me right now and you know, we're, and I'm here from anywhere from 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning until eight, at least eight o'clock at night, sometimes later on the West Coast, depending on what's going on with some of the things we've got over there. Yeah. But you know, it's, it's a lot of this now back, before COVID, it was planes, trains, automobiles. I mean, it was being, you know, especially with everything that's going on in the sports betting industry, it was going to London because that was really the center, you know, was, you know, one of the two centers of the universe of, of sports betting. You had London, you have Vegas. So I was bouncing back and forth to those different areas a lot. Right. Um, I'm going crazy that, I mean, I, I can't say I'm a big fan of London or being over in the UK, but I love Las Vegas and I miss it. Uh, I actually learned that there's life out off, the, off of the strip uh, um, in, in, in Las Vegas. I had no idea. <laughs> I, I just thought that everything happened on the strip. Now I think people have houses and there's re real restaurants yeah. and there's life in other places <laughs> in Las Vegas. I, I had no idea. Well, you answered what my next question was going to be. Is I was going to ask how has COVID-19 affected um, this industry and your work life. But since you kind of answered that, can you talk maybe about how long-term you think this might impact the industry and kind of what you do? Yeah, I, look, I think COVID has done something, um, has changed a lot of things for us. And now, especially in business. Now, here's the thing, right? I mean, I would love, to, I would have loved to have been at your conference speak in person. I love it. I mean, I'm a, you know, I see my, my buddy Jason Coles on the, on the line right here. I mean, like I'm sitting here, I, I, you know, he wouldn't, everyone knows that I carry a, you know, my right pockets filled with business cards and I'm always looking to give out business cards and collect other people's business cards and make as many contacts as possible. I mean, that's, that's the core of what I'm all about and trying to take those contacts and turn them into relationships and try to help other people. I mean, I love that stuff. I love being in person. It's, I haven't given out a business card since March. It's like, I'm, I'm going crazy. I mean, but I, so for me, like that's, that, that's changed what that that's something that's definitely changed in my 21st year of being in the venture capital business. But one, one thing that's actually been amazing is, is the amount of things that actually can get done over zoom or any other video call. Right. The willingness of others to get on to these calls, to do these types of calls, um, spend time with people on these calls has been incredible. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we at 76 Capital also, you know, started our 76 Capital Leadership Series, where I, like you here, interview sports executives, entrepreneurs, and athletes, and talk to them about all the amazing things that are going on in, this, in the world of sports. 
And so that's been really cool. We did a lot of big in-person events right. um, prior to this, but now we're doing it like, you know, we're doing this leadership series, which is now a podcast and a video um, series as well. And it's incredible to see the, the reach that we're now getting uh, with our message, our overall brand of what we're doing, and then being able to, you know, have just a great conversation with, with people in the industry. And then, you know, what, you know, it's, it's almost amazing. And I would say like eight times out of 10 after one of these podcasts, we end up figuring out a way to do business together. And, sure. and, and it's, it's really awesome. So I, I think that this has been a, it's been a good thing, but I am a huge proponent of being in person with people. Mm. And I can't wait to get back to that. But in the meantime, this is good. And I think this may also, um, you know, cut back on, on some travel that we all did right. back then. Right. Yeah. Just going off of that, I agree with you completely. Just when you're in person, you kind of have a better understanding of that person. You get more of a social interaction. But I mean, like you said, this pandemic, yeah, it's set some things back, but it's also opened the door for so many things like, for example, the leadership series and the SSBC digital series. I mean, if it weren't for the pandemic, I may not be interviewing right now. You know, you never know. So uh, I'm appreciative in that aspect of it. Um, can you talk a little bit more about some investments that 76 Capital has made? Uh, just give a few examples of those and maybe talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. And, and, I, and I'm thrilled. I mean, this, this is really fun. I'm, I'm so happy that we're having this opportunity to have this conversation. Um, it, it's, it's so much fun. I, I love these things. And I'll tell you, like, these are again it's it's this it's it's an incredible way to, to to develop a network and something that i think that we all um can learn you know a lot from these types of programs so you know at 76 capital again as i said earlier you know we're all about investing in sports tech companies sports betting companies and esports businesses so i touched on a little bit one of our esports companies which is nerd street gamers and they're all about trying to get you know the the world to you know, basically democratize the world of esports, enable everybody to be able to play. I mean, look, if we decided that, you know, you, you know, you, me, and eight other people want to go play League of Legends tonight, you know, play five on five. I mean, like, where do we go to go do that? Right. I mean, if you want to go play play basketball tonight, five on five, let's go. I mean, there's courts everywhere, but you can't do that within the world of of esports yet. We want to make that possible. Um, you know, from an, a sports tech perspective, you know, one of our portfolio companies is a company called Diamond Kinetics. Uh, Diamond Kinetics is a baseball tech company, and it's, it's this. This is one of one of our one of our products behind me. This is this baseball right here. I mean, this ball is. I, I always, you know, tell people there's more tech in this ball than the original iPhone. Maybe not exactly that much, but there's a lot of tech in here. Mm -hmm. But it feels like a, a major league baseball, and if you you know and you put this in the hand of major league pitchers and they close their eyes and they don't know the difference between this and a regular ball. Right. So these are the types of things. So what's really cool about this is that the tech in this ball allows you to be able to track your velocity, the spin rate of the ball, your arm position. There's so many cool things that can happen, and then you don't, and that that information instantaneously gets put on your phone your iPad, your computer, but it can also be done remotely. So teams like the Los Angeles Dodgers and others send these down to the Dominican Republic and other you know, countries outside the U.S. where they're looking to you know, recruit or, or scout players. And they just put a bucket of these balls out there and all the information, all the data gets sent back to their offices in L.A. Um, they do it and uh, 10 other major league teams and this is this is used through kids you know kids baseball you know youth baseball and it's just amazing all the things we put sensors and bats this is a really really exciting company it's a company that we're investors in with the Dodgers the Pittsburgh Pirates um, and there's some really exciting things that are are happening with with this business from a, from a tech perspective and you know think about all the data that's being collected that's great from a performance perspective it's also really great from a, a pers from you know f you know in the future will be used for things like sports betting, um, you know from a sports betting perspective, um, you know we we've really we've gone in deep, um, and we dove in. So what happened in the sports betting industry on May fourteenth of twenty eighteen, PASPA was overturned. PASPA was this law that said sports betting um, it would sports betting could be legal outside of the state of Nevada 
in the United States. Mm. Prior to PASPA being overturned, you could only bet legally on sports in one state, Nevada. And now, since PASPA was overturned by the Supreme Court, 25 states, three more just came on, Louisiana, South Dakota, and um, uh, Louisiana, South Dakota, and one other, um, just came on, Maryland, sorry, and came on during the election last week. Yes. So they, they voted the, the, the um, you know, you know, they voted it in. I mean, it was, it's crazy. So 25 states, D.C., Puerto Rico, are all, all have regulated sports betting in their states now. Some are live. Most are live. Most, a couple, you know, the new ones and, and a few others haven't launched yet, but they're all launching. It's incredible. It's an incredible brand new industry. The amount of money that was being bet illegally is now, going to be, is now starting to be bet legally. Right. Um, and we haven't even gotten you know, mobile sports betting in New York. We haven't gotten sports betting in Florida, Texas, or California. But they're coming. And those four are like countries. They're not even like states. Right. So the amount of betting and the amount of, 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 you know, the amount of money that will be in this is, is incredible. So we're really excited about that industry. So we've invested in companies in the data collection side of that industry, the data analytics business, the media side of the business, which we'll talk about in a second, the, um, the integrity side of the business to make sure that things are on the up and up. Like there's really no SEC, there's no regulatory body that go, goes across and makes sure everything is on the up and up. Mm -hmm. um, there's regulatory bodies in each state but there's not this company that kind of goes across it all and makes sure that everything's cool because we want to make sure that no one's throwing games. And then at the same time, we've got, you know, a company, which we're, which we recently just made a little bit of noise about. It's called victory sports book. And they're going to, you know, they, and I believe that they're going to be like the Google of sports books. I think a lot of the sports books that are out there today are good. Um, but this is an opportunity to be a lot better than the ones that are out there. And, and, and we hope to, to launch that officially very soon. Um, but I mean, you know, talking about, talking to you and your, your team in Syracuse, I mean, look, we, we started something called VEASAN. Uh, VEASAN is the sports betting network. It's V-S-I-N. It was started by Brent Musburger, the legendary broadcaster. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we are a 24 hour sports betting network. And we have a studio inside of a sports book started as a studio inside of a sports book in Las Vegas, just like CNBC started with a, you know, was started and then they started, they put a, um, a studio inside of the New York Stock Exchange. You know, we think the New York Stock Exchange is like, is, is a sports book. I mean, that, that's what it's all about. We now have multiple studios all over the country. Uh, if people are in New York, we're on, you know, we're on Sirius XM, we're on Comcast, we're in 90 million homes on, on Comcast. If you right underneath Netflix, you click that that app, and there's Visa, and you can watch it 24 hours a day. And it's all about it's just like you know CNBC. You know we we track the movement of the numbers. Right. So if it's the Eagles Giants and the Eagles are favored by seven, and that's what the, how the line starts, and then something happens during the week, and all of a sudden the line drops to minus three, we'll track it. We'll talk about it, and then if it comes back up. And then what also happens, right? What also can happen is during the game, right? So just like there's the red zone on the NFL network, well, we have the green zone where we talk about the game and how the numbers are moving during the game. Because when a team gets, you know, converts a third down and then gets a first down or scores, the lines move, right. the numbers move. So it's really, really, ish. it's really, really, um, it, it, it's really exciting to see how you know, the things that we've done on this channel, you know, we, one of the things that has been amazing is, you know, it's, it's a shame that ESPN just laid off what three, 500 people or whatever it was, but we're hiring, right? We've hired almost 50 people since August. Uh, we are bringing people on. If you want to move out to Las Vegas and you love sports and you love betting, you know, let me know, you know, reach out to me. I'm Wayne Kimmel all over the internet. Just hit me up and, direct message me, whatever. I mean, it's really easy to reach me, but like we are, we we're, we're bringing people on because we, we have studios. Now we have three studios in Las Vegas. We have a studio in the, um, in, in the actual, um, the, the stadium uh, the football stadium inside of uh, 
the Broncos Stadium in Denver. We're in Chicago. We're in Detroit. We have studios. We have a studio in Pittsburgh. We have a studio in, in, uh, at the Borgata in, in Atlantic City. Mm-hmm. So we're growing and growing and growing this network, and it's super exciting to be part of that. That's amazing. I mean, I think it's really cool to see how you kind of approach that whole industry at different angles, you know. You have the analytics side, you have the actual on-field technology, and then the betting side and the network side. I think that's that's crazy. It's awesome that you're able to do all of that. Um, so you work a lot with athletes, whether it's the 76 Capital Sports Advisory, the Athlete Venture Group, or your strategic partnership with Rubicon Talent. Can you speak on how all of these connect to what 76 Capital does in terms of investment? Yeah, I, I, Jordan, I love that question. I, I'll tell you why. Because, you know, when you, I, I say this all the time to people in my industry, I'm like, look, if, if I was investing in the biotech industry, mm-hmm. I should probably have some scientists with me, right? Because, you know, you got to know, you got to have people that know, know all that science stuff. Right. Um, so you need experts. So if I'm investing in sports, I need experts. I need top level coaches that I have access to. I need top level athletes that can put their hands on that, that baseball or put their hands on the basketball and be like, yeah, this is cool. Or what are you guys looking for? You're tracking what? No one cares about that. People care about this. I mean, exit velocity a few years ago in baseball, like what, what was that? It wasn't even like a thing, right? Now it's like you just, it's like on you know, regular TV now. You want to you know this, this kind of stuff. So there's so much amazing information that you can learn from these elite athletes as well as coaches. And we make sure that if we get involved in, in these companies, we bring those people around, the, around them. And, you know, and even at the same time, the, the, the coolest thing about esports, though, is that a lot of the top professional physical athletes are also huge gamers. Right. Right. So our, one of our guys at Rubicon Talent, which is a in Rubicon Talent for everybody, is a sports um, uh, agency that does marketing for professional athletes, Olympic athletes, and sports broadcasters. Mm-hmm. And some of our, our clients are guys like, um, you know, retiree DeMarco Murray, guy who's, st- who's, who's now, who's still killing it out there, guys like, you know, George Kittle and Eric Ebron and, um, uh, you know, Emmanuel Sanders, you know, now with the, with, with the, you know, the, the Saints, Cole Beasley's, you know, you know, now with the Bills, you know, the last couple of years, guys like that. And then we, you know, we have Olympic athletes and broadcasters and for that as well, that we help them do marketing deals. So one of our guys, Emmanuel Sanders, right? He's a big gamer. He at the time was, was playing for the Denver Broncos and we opened up an esports facility in Denver with our guys from Nerd Street Gamers. And, and he was like, yo, Wayne, get me involved in this thing. And the reason it wasn't like, I want to just, just get me paid. No, it was like, I'm, a, um, I'm an amazing Apex Legends player. Like, I'm really good. Like, I win tournaments. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, no, no, seriously. Like, that's what I do. So I, I hook him up with the CEO of Nerd Street. Nerd Street, his name's John Fazio. These guys start playing online. They're, they're playing after games. Monday night games end. John and, and Emmanuel are on playing video games against each other. It's crazy. And then week 17 last year, he's, he was playing for the 49ers that went to the Super Bowl. He, um, he, he put the Nerd Street logo on his cleats and played in the game with him because he loves the company so much. So he not only became involved as, as a, someone promoting the business, right. he also became an investor. He also is somebody that is just – super passionate about it so it's really cool to have um you know very high profile people that are authentic and legit because if you like put you know like i see some of these we'll leave them we'll remain nameless how about this seven foot dudes right and they walk into some laboratory somewhere in like a lab coat what the hell do they really know what's going on in those in those in those test tubes right but when i put ralph sampson okay one of the NBA's greatest play, basketball players and one of the college basketball players, greatest ever players, right? And I put him on a basketball court. 
and we're talking about like what with with this with the you know CEO of one of our portfolio companies, Shot Tracker, as an example. That guy can really help the business, right. and that's what we try to do. That's amazing that you're able to do that. You know, cross over the esports and actual athletes. I remember seeing something. I forget how long ago it was, but it was LeBron James and the entire starting Lakers five playing on 2K uh, against other people, and they were their own people in the game. And I saw another thing, you know, how he practices his game, his movements in the game, and then uses that in the future in real life. So it kind of, it's like practice, extra practice, but on the video game. And that's so cool that you're able to do that. Um, You talked previously about your networking successes. So I wanted to know, is there someone that has been kind of like a mentor to you, whether it's now or years ago? Well, you know, Jordan, you you hit me on a good day. Um, Today's, today would have been my dad's 80th birthday. And, um, you know, he died a couple years ago. And um, this is a picture of him over my shoulder. And he's my guy, right? He, he, was my, he was my everything, right? He was my mentor. He was um, someone that always told me, don't quit. Keep making it happen. Keep moving forward. You'll, you'll get it done, right? Always so, so encouraging. Mm-hmm. Always someone that was there to, to help and push and, and, and just give me the comfort that everything's going to be okay, but you got to keep moving forward. Right. Don't pout. Don't be so upset. Just keep moving. And I was so lucky to have that in my life for as many years as, as he was around. And, and, uh, you know, I, it's crazy. I mean, a lot of the lessons and a lot of the things that I thought that I learned myself and then I wrote in my book, they were things that he taught me. Those were things that he kind of was always encouraging me to go do. Because look, we're, we're all kind of like a little shy, no matter how much, you know, matter, no matter how successful you are, no matter how you know, great you think you are or whatever it is in life. But you know, it's hard. It's hard walking into a room where you don't know people. It's hard walking onto a basketball court when you're the only white kid. It's really hard going and playing football against kids that want to just freaking rip your head off, right? It's not, it's scary. It's a scary thing. It's hard to go up there and stand in the batter's box and like face a, you know, some high school kid who throws 90 miles an hour. I mean, like, what is going, like, this guy's, you know, everyone's joking, like, he's in, he's in college, he's too old, but you got to dig in and you got to take your, your hacks, right? And so, but that, that's the kind of thing where, he helped give me that confidence to be able to do those things. And I've taken a lot of those lessons into the world of business. And that's why, you know, we talked about earlier, but what I miss so much, what I miss so much is I can't see all the people we're talking with, right? I want to like talk to everybody that's on this call and that's out there, right? I want to be able to to share and and, and talk with people and ask questions. I want to, Jordan, I want to know more about you than probably I'm talking right now, right? I want to know what you want to go do, what you're into. How can I help you? How can we potentially do things in the future? Because I may need a job from you someday. You know, who knows? You right. could be the CEO of Nike and, I, and we got to go do a deal. You could be, you know, the, you could go become the, you know, the president of, a, of an NFL team. And we're, we're going to go to try to do some amazing business together in the future. Those are the kinds of things that if we develop a relationship and we start talking with people, that's the things, those are the kind of things that you learn. And a lot of those things happen when you're together with people and you're able to slowly have a conversation and talk with people and, 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 and people, you just never know. Like, and that's one of the things that's been so incredible in my career is that I've had the opportunity to, to talk with really great people, to figure out people that are, are passionate about things that I'm passionate about and whether they become team members of mine, whether they become investors of mine, whether they become entrepreneurs that I invest in, who knows? But it's really just, there's nothing better than, than finding a common ground with somebody and then, and then running with that person and doing some great things together. Yeah, I think that's truly amazing that you, know, you had someone like your father to kind of guide you and show you, point you down the right path and everything. And I appreciate you for sharing the words from him. Uh, those really resonate with me and I want to go read the book now just to 
see some of the, his ideas that are thrown in there. But um, you've been so successful, and you know everyone kind of has a mistake here and there. So I was wondering if you can share maybe one mistake in your career that you've made. Well, you know, I think, you know, t sometimes in, in your, first of all, Jordan, send me your address. I'm sending it. I want to send you a signed copy of my book. Um, I really appreciate you having me on the show. Of course. And, thank you. But, thank you. Um, and and I, I'll tell you, you got to trust your gut. And if your gut's telling you something, sometimes you got to walk away. You got to walk away from a deal. You got to walk away from a person. You're like, you know, gosh, I, this, this person's really fun. This person's really awesome hanging out with. Something just doesn't feel right, right? Or, or you're like, I, I'm going to invest in this company. I'm just not crazy about the CEO. But, you know, we'll figure it out. We'll be fine. It'll be fine. We'll figure it out. So, something's not adding up here. Mm -hmm. And if you don't listen to your gut, if you don't listen to that and, and you just, or you don't do your, like, do your due diligence all the way, take it all the way to the end, even though everyone's rushing because every deal you will ever do in life, it's a rush. Oh my God, it's gotta, it's gotta get done by Friday. And my original business partner, his name was Ian Berg, and he would always say to me, kid, I took him out of retirement back when I first started my first venture capital fund. And I talk about the story in my book and he would always be like, kid, listen, we'll talk about it on Monday. And I'll be like, I'm like, I'm like, Ian, like they, they're calling me and, and the deal needs to be done on Friday. And it's, it's, it's four o'clock on Friday. And, 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 and what are we going to do all weekend? He goes, hang out with your family, have a good time. You're about to have a baby. It's all good. You and your wife have a good night, have a good weekend. And I'm like, I would freak out. I couldn't sleep. I didn't know what to do. You know, I didn't, I wasn't know what, you know, I would call the other, the other side and I would say, Hey, you know, I'm just, uh, we'll get back to you. And they're like, what you're supposed to. And he's like, no, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get to it. And it's amazing. You know, if you slow down and if you really do your research and you really spend your time and you, and you, and you look and learn as do as much research as possible on people. Do as much research as you can on, on others. Put people in situations. I mean, one of the things that I love to do, and it's kind of something you really can't do right now, but I mean, I love going out to dinner or going to lunch with people. Um, you know, I think that you can learn a lot about a person and how they, how they treat the, you know, the server that comes over to the table. If they're like, yo, get me some butter. You're like, what? Are you kidding me? How about please? How about, excuse me, how about, you know, thank you. I mean, like if people aren't doing, you know, saying those types of things and they're ordering others around, I mean, who, like who, who what kind of king do they think they are, right? Or queen, right? I mean, I, I'm, that's not for me, right. right? That's that's not my thing. I don't, I don't want, because here's the problem. The problem is we got back, going back to what we said earlier about being nice, right? I'm going to have to live with this person as, as a business partner, as an investor, as their investor, for them for a long time. And if they're not nice to people, if they're not even nice to the server or the waiter or waitress, then what, I think they're gonna, I mean, they're gonna, they're, they're not gonna treat anyone nicely. And I don't wanna be around those kinds of people. Right. So you've given so much, so much great advice. And we have one more question, then we're gonna switch over to a Q&A from uh, the attendees here. The last question is, um, if you could, in one sentence, give advice to these younger students, these younger entrepreneurs that are listening and tuning in, what would it be? It's, it's really simple. Get off the couch and go do it. That's, that's amazing. That's, that's awesome. I'm definitely, next time I want to go sit on the couch, I'm not going to now. But... Um, Let's see. So we have a couple questions here from the attendees. Uh, one being Alex. He asks, of the three industries that 76 Capital represents, esports, sports tech, and sports betting, which do you think would be the most successful in the next five to 10 years? And is there another industry where you believe that is on the rise as well? It's a great question. 
And here's the answer, all of them, and here's why. Because there's, an, there's this incredible convergence that's occurring. The world of the digital world and the physical world are all coming together. They're all converging. It's not just like, oh, it's a sports tech company, this is a sports betting company, it's an esports company. Because I'll, I'll give you a, you know, a hypothetical. So you take one of those baseballs, it's a physical thing, it's a sports tech thing, you throw it. And, and all of a sudden you're being filmed, you could film yourself, you're getting all the data from the ball itself. That you then become digitized and become a player in a video game. Right. And then people that are playing that video game or watching you in the physical world can also bet on you, whether that's gonna be a ball or strike or whatever happens within that game. So all of these worlds are merging, all of these things are coming together. And that's just one example of how this is all coming together. And, and I really believe that the overall sports industry, which, which includes things like fitness technology, which includes new media platforms. Mm -hmm. So we're invested in companies like Forte on, on the fitness side of things. We're invested in companies like Maestro on the, 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 the digital platform side. I mean, it is, it's unbelievable. But I, I mean, it's this week I'm having this, and maybe, maybe you guys will be able to help me here. You know, I have this brainstorming session with one of my companies. And we are going to be talking about what will the sports media industry look like? Not after COVID, not next year, not the year after, but in the next three, four, five years from now. What will it be like watching an NFL game? What will that experience be? And as one of my guys said, don't tell me second screen BS because there's not gonna be a second screen. It's all gonna be on this screen. At least that's one of the guys, that's what their belief is. It's one screen and that one screen will allow you to do things that you can't even imagine. Whether that's, you know, and, and all the things that you, you know, it could be anything, but like that's, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a one screen experience that allows you to do everything. I think it's pretty interesting and I can't wait for this conversation. Awesome. We have another question by Ben. He asks, how do you handle the pursuit of greatness and the desire to be the best at what you do with the process of living and being in the moment? Well, Ben, you've got to live in the moment. You've got to enjoy life because life is incredibly too short, no matter how long you, you, you live. And because of that, you got to go for it all the time. And like, because you don't know, you do not know what's coming around the corner. And if you're not trying to go and make it happen every two minutes and, and you're not trying to like, you know, really push the limits and, and, and try to do some incredible things, then what are, what are we doing out here? Like just sitting around and hanging out? That's not for me. For me, it's all about trying to figure out what is the next, next thing. Be on the forefront, you know, be on the cutting edge you know, work with entrepreneurs, help them become successful, really build the next, next thing. That's what it's all about. And to me, that is what it means by living in the moment, because you're really going for it. Right. And you're not going in a situation where like, in the future, I'm going to go do this. No, you're going to go do this now. We're going to go do this now. We're going to do this together. Mm -hmm. and, and that is, to me, that's why I jump out of bed every morning. That's awesome. We have one last question from Jimmy. He asks, what is the most important thing you took away from college in terms of concepts or ideas that you learned? Jimmy, I think the most important thing I took away from college is that it was important to be able to develop relationships with people. Um, you know, I, you'll see in my book, Jimmy, um, there's, a, there's a page in my book and I talk about you know, and it's like a, one of my bigger quotes. And I talk about all the things that you should go do in college. And it's all about experimenting and learning and doing this and doing that and having sex and I mean, all sorts of stuff, right? So <laughs> uh, I, I say that because um, I, I gave a commencement address at a university and um, the president beforehand, 
she said to me, she said, could you do me a favor and don't talk about that one quote? And if you, if you do quote, talk about it, could you leave the sex part out? She's like, we just had a sexual, you know, sexual problem here. And I said, look, I, I, I don't mean it like that. I mean that you, this is an opportunity in college to experiment. This is your opportunity to meet people. This is your opportunity to meet people who don't look like you. This is an opportunity for you to, you know, have conversations with people that don't agree with you. This is an opportunity for you to, to learn things that maybe don't make it, that are not that great right now. Like if you're, whatever your major is, do something completely crazy in, 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 your, in, in, the, in your electives. Try things. Learn lots of different things. This is your time to do that. This is not like, you know, you're a, um, you know, you're, you're going to focus on one sport, which I drives me crazy, you know, with all these parents that, you know, they, they, they literally have their kid play soccer or football or basketball or whatever it is, or baseball all year round. Like it's, that's crazy in my mind. I mean, I think it's so important for you to be able to get different experiences from all these different sports as well as when you're in college to get experiences across everything. You are in an amazing place. Um, I mean, look, again, COVID is different. I have a daughter in college who's a sophomore. It's different. Mm -hmm. It's not what it should be. It's not what it, but it's going to get that better. It's going to come back. But I think that this is an amazing time to try things mm -hmm. and get to know people. And you will, those types of things, you know, walking up to someone that you've never, that you're, you know, whether it's a guy or a girl or whatever it is, and you just try to like have a conversation, give it a shot. It may work. You walk up to that, you know, person that you're attracted to that you're like, wow, I would do anything to be with that person. And you just sit there and you talk to your friends about it. Screw that go walk over to that person and see if that's the person, that, if that's what you really want. You may find that that person is not what you're looking for. Right. It may be what you are looking for and then you got an opportunity to do that. Now that's, again, that's super, super hard. But where can you practice that better than anywhere else? College. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I do and I talk about, I'll finish here, when I talk, one of, one of the things I, the reason why I, 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 one of the reasons I wrote my book was because I talk about these different tips and tricks to break the ice. Because what do you say? I never knew what to say. I could never figure out what to say to that really pretty girl that I wanted to go talk to. I didn't know what to say. I'm like, hi, I'm Wayne. And it was like, oh, really? What a name that is. See ya. You know what I mean? Like, that was, that was, that's how, but now, they're, they're, you, you know, at least fortunately, I've been able to figure out ways to now, you know, develop a conversation with somebody, talk to someone, ask people questions, learn from others, listen, like listening is huge. It's such a big thing. So many people just talk too much. Right. Well, Wayne, I feel like we could talk all day about all of this. Um, to those of you that are listening, thank you so much for attending. Be sure to check out Diamond Kinetics, Nerd Street Gamers, and if you're looking for a job in Vegas, Beeson. And if there's one thing to take away, get off the get off the couch and go for it. Wayne, I really can't thank you enough for taking the time. I know you're busy, but I truly appreciate you coming on and giving all this great advice. Thank you so much. Um, I wish health and everything to you and your family. Thanks so much, and and stay safe. <laughs>